Again, we are going to determine the Jordan canonical form of a matrix A. But now we encounter an eigenvalue with geometric multiplicity 2 instead of 1. What will happen if we simply use our standard method? Watch and see. So here we have our matrix A. Uh, I already give you that uh, lambda equals minus 3 with algebra multiplicity 3. Well, you know how to do this uh, using the characteristic polynomial. Then we compute A minus lambda i. And that's over here. And if we reduce, we see that we will have now two free variables, which means that the E lambda is a span of u and v, where u is here and v is there. So the geometric multiplicity is now 2. Now, uh, let's give it a try. What did we do? Uh, as endpoint, we set the eigenvector. So just let's try to do that. So as our endpoint, we set u1 equals u. And we try to go move up to the, um, uh, or to the ladder by solving a minus lambda i times x equals u1. So here we have a minus lambda i, and we augment with u1. And then we reduce, and the system becomes inconsistent. Hey, but that's not what we want. Now we haven't got any, a, uh, another u2. Oh, but we can do something else. Maybe it helps if we put uh, uh, on the right hand side not u, but if we try it with the other one, v. So we said now v1 equals v, and solve a minus up to 1 x equals v1. I put the v over here. We will reduce n. Again, inconsistent. So this doesn't work. So apparently, neither u nor v was an endpoint of one of the cycles. So what's going on here? So what went wrong? Now we know the dimension of u uh, minus lambda i equals 2, geometric multiplicity. Now, if you compute a minus lambda i squared, you get a zero matrix. So the dimension of a minus lambda i squared equals 3. So that means that we will have two sequences. One sequence uh, starting at some unknown u2 going into u1 and then going to 0. And another sequence uh, of uh, v1 going into 0 immediately. Now the problem is to find uh, this uh, correct u1, which is part of the larger uh, uh, cycle. I mean, for this, this other cycle, we, we can just pick any uh, eigenvector. But the problem is this larger cycle here. This correct u1 is some kind of linear combination of u and v. But which one? I don't know. So that's a problem. So how are we going to go on? How are we going to find this second cycle? Well, by a, a different approach, sort of more ad hoc approach. Well, let's try to guess the correct endpoint. Let's, let's try to guess some correct u2. So what's the condition for u2? Okay, u2 has to be in the null space of a minus lambda i squared, but it's not allowed to be in the null space of a minus lambda i. So your endpoint has to be somewhere in this null space, but not in that one. Well, this, is, this one over here is the eigenspace. So you have to find some u2, which is in the uh, null space of the null matrix, but not an eigenvector. Now, any vector is, of course, in, uh, in this null space over here. So this first condition is easy. And I say, well, let's take u2 is just a 1, 0, 0. 1, 0, 0 is not an eigenvector of the matrix. So uh, condition uh, 2 is satisfied. 1, 0, 0 is not a linear combination of these two over here. So let's pick u2 equals u1. And then we now we can step down because we have the end point of our cycle. So u1 equals a minus lambda i times u e1, uh, which gives us um, a 1 to 1. So now we have our cycle uh, e1, 1 to 1, 0. Uh, and for v1, we need that, there, that this is independent of u1 and u2, and it has to be in the null space of uh, a minus lambda i. So v1 has to be an eigenvector of a. And we can choose, for example, v1 equals v. That does the job. And then, in summary, we have our uh, uh, u1 and u2, and we have our uh, v1 and uh, our uh, GCF. And you see that things, in this case, become a bit 
tricky because you cannot just mindlessly do well mindlessly uh, do a certain algorithm we, we, but we run in some trouble because we do not know the start point we do not know the end point so we have to take some endpoint and check whether everything works out now for small matrices this is okay and this will hugely work out fine but you have to be aware that especially if you start to work with bigger matrices then this can uh, really become uh, a big mess however for this matrix uh, we are fine we found the gcf and we found the p such as a equals p times gcf times p inverse 